we've seen the South Carolina standards. Um, one of the resources that we used was curriculum from Common Sense Media for educators, and we'll have the specific um, link available later. But they provide level content on all four of the areas that we discuss for your middle, your high school, your elementary, your very young, be used by parents or teachers, and it's all free. There's videos that are free, the handout, the lesson plan, everything is it's all together free. And that is one of my very favorite words, is free. So obviously um, the, the program was developed in cooperation with um, Harvard School of Education, and so you will want, you can pick and choose which lessons that you think will work best for you, best for your students, you can share them with other teachers. But what I did was I modified the lessons that were on the reading and understanding level of parents in my district because I do serve our less fortunate parents um, and modified it so that it would be applicable to them. Okay, and this is just a sample of their website. You can see how it's broken into different units with lessons. This is the 9 through 12, and the link, I believe, is included in our Edmodo already. But we talk about digital life, about your online personal branding, the brand, and then I translate that into the branding for your child. So all of these wonderful things that look so cute when you put it up on Facebook, will it look as cute when they're applying to college? <coughs> You know, or when they're doing a job interview. Because in our very small community, we all kind of know one another. And if something comes up on Facebook, you will have some people who will, you know, investigate to see if it's actually true. But then you'll also say, oh, that sounds like so and so. That, that must be true. And I knew that they would do something like that. So, let's move on. The next component, in addition to having the broadcast channel, and in addition to being able to broadcast through our VBRIC system, which is the internal video, we also developed a website for internet safety. And this website is accessible inside our district and outside. It's accessible for parents. It includes not only the video instruction, but also resources for parents and for parents to use with their children. It contains um, completely electronic or printable resources that actually take a parent, just like you would a student, through the vocabulary, through the actual process of how do you set up a plan for when and how your child can use digital media? How do you learn more about what your child is, is doing? So, move to the next part. And so this is just a screenshot of our website. I'm gonna check my time because I wanna give you guys a chance to see our videos. Just doing well. We take polls, we do surveys, and so that provides some of our documentation for usage of the site. This is a Weebly site, and do, does everyone know about Weebly? Okay, well for those of you who don't, Weebly, it's w-e-e-b-l-y.com or education.weebly.com, and it is a free drag and drop website. It's internet based, so I can start a website at home or at my desk, and I've actually taught in services in our school, you can build a website in five minutes. And it will look like this. You can change the template in about 15 seconds, and it will change the template for your entire site based on CSS. And all of your content will be there. You don't have to write it or type it more than once. I love, 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 love Weebly. <laughs> And you can integrate either their subdomain, which is free, or if you have a domain, you can publish to your own domain. So all of your branding is there. So that's just a little side. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question about that? Um, we have it blocked, we even blocked in our district because of civil rules, because of the um, access to inappropriate um, materials. How do y'all? Well, what we have. Weebly itself is locked, but the subdomain education.weebly is accessible. So it depends on how your district chooses to do that. Um, and then also. The uh, security officer said to really access the EDU, the whole Weebly has to be that's, that's what we 
you've done, I, I don't know how y'all set this up. So, but yeah, if I go just to Weebly from my desk, I can't log in, I can't do anything. Uh -huh. I have to go to education now. So I don't, I don't work with the IT department, so I don't know how they've done that. They figured it out. But it, it's working because I, I do this from my desk almost every day. Um, because we also have our, <coughs> some of our schools use it as well. So, okay. This is a screenshot of a Book Builder book. And I, is everyone familiar with Book Builder? Um, Bookbuilder.cast, C-A-S-T dot O-R-G is a way to build your own digital, fully accessible books online. So if you have a student who wrote a story and they wanted to illustrate it and narrate it and embed video, you can do all of that for free at bookbuilder.cast.org. And you have the opportunity to include components that make it easier to read and access. So in addition to your text, you have these lovely little coaches, and we have an explanations guide, a strategy guide, a fact guide. So as they are accessing our content, if you have difficulty understanding, one of the coaches will give you definitions of the important words of the page. And we, I, we set this up that way. This was one of the things I did in my ed tech program. Um, or if we ask a question and do an assessment, the strategy coach will actually teach or explain a strategy It'll be written, and you'll hear audio of what was written to explain how to how to figure it out. Because we don't want to give the answer; we want to give scaffolding to get to the next point. Okay, so <laughs> it's wonderful to do video. Everybody loves the fun part. Everybody wants to get a camera and jump in front of it and look while I'm on TV. And I'm so cute. And look at my hair. And look at my dress. And look at my outfit this day. And that is the most important part of being on TV, right? Yeah. Is looking good and everyone can see you. Because if you don't have that, then what do you have? Well, what you have is opportunities for content area integration. So what we have done is not just say that the only thing we're going to teach and the only thing that we're going to include is directly the internet safety part of SEPA. We're also going to include writing and reading and research and content creator standards that are related to don't use copyrighted material. Use a common um, copyright or access, I, the word just went right out of my head, oh, CC. Yeah. yeah, well no, creative commons on your own material so that you can share. And we talk about you know, what the different creative commons copyrights are and what, which ones you might want to apply to your material and the links and access for that at creativecommons.org. And so it is a holistic learning experience for our students, and we are starting at the high school and actually bringing it down, you know, and um, elementary, because all of our students can do this. And especially as you look at the Common Core standards that we're just all so excited about implementing because they're just so awesome. Um, and they really, I really, I do quite like many things about them. Um, writing is so significant in how it enables us to see another component of reading and reading comprehension. Because that's how we test it. We know that you understood what was in a passage because you wrote a short answer, or you wrote an essay, or you understood and selected the correct multiple choice that was written correctly. That's how we test it. And so if you cannot write effectively, then we kind of think you're dumb. I mean, I, that's, that's, the, that's the way you have to put it, because that is how we judge how well you learned and understood and comprehended. So this is an opportunity with a medium that students really enjoy to say, no, you can't just jump in front of a camera. You have to write an outline. Where, where is my paper? And the, the students will, they will tell you that I will do that. Because I'll say, no, you can't jump in front of a camera. Paper? Where's my paper? Where's my storyboard? 
Where's my script? Where's my outline? And we'll talk about the different components that they need to present to me before they can ever get in front of a camera. And we'll throw you in front of a camera sometime. We will. Um, as a matter of fact, we had a visitor come to our school, to the high school, and our cameraman was like, oh, this is awesome. And he literally ran at breakneck speed down to the library and came and got a camera and he set it up. And then he asked the um, captain of who sat, <coughs> Spade 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 Ward. Ward. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, upper level security clearance in dress uniform. Um, may I interview you? So now you have your standard stock interview questions, but it's a learning opportunity for, well, what specific research would you have needed to do to get better questions as we evaluate the video? What film and video literacy components can you add to that? Well, if I had more time, I would have used the taller tripod because he's tall and he was up on stage. If I had more time, I should have also tied into the audio system where we'll go and get that audio um, file. If I had thought about it in advance, because I only knew he was coming for a month, if I had thought about it in advance, I would have had a list of questions and I would have asked him more specific things about his job rather than starting off my interview with, so what is your name? Because that's that hard-hitting, in-depth journalism that we all crave <laughs> to know more about. So you're really seeing your writing, your research, those other common core components coming into the fun of being on video. Okay, so this is our homepage for our um, television and video program. It's CCSD TV. So C for Colleton, C for County, S for School, D for District, and TV for TV. Dot org. And we're using a couple of things here. This again is built with Weebly. I'm sorry, Zandon. Weebly. 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 Oh, yeah, Weebly. Love Weebly. And we've got our Facebook like box embedded. And we've got our Remind 101 widget embedded. And Remind 101, it's remind101.com. Does everybody have that know about it? Remind. If you want, Remind 101, if you want to be able to send mass text messages to a class or multiple classes for free from the teacher side, you can use Remind 101. Your students send a text message to a phone number that identifies their class or their group. So you'll see here it says SCAZL 2013, and I think, did we put that on the admin? I'm not sure. Um, and then CCSD TV 56 crew, and I have Title One parents, and so I have my different groups. And I can schedule a message or do an instant text message to everybody who signed up in that group for free. And so especially if they have unlimited texting, which if you give a child a cell phone, get the unlimited texting. <laughs> because otherwise it's just way too expensive. Um, so now, on the days that we weren't here, what they got was that we weren't in class because we were here. They got a message. Miss <laughs> Simmons says, Miss Mom and I are out of town. We will not be recording this morning. Go to your regularly scheduled intensive writing. And they got that message last night, and they got it at 6.30 <laughs> this morning. So no one should have shown up to the library because they all checked their phones before they went to bed and before they got up and got to schools at some point they looked on their phone. And the incentive for them to do that is because of this special focus we're having as a build up to HSAP with the intensive writing, we get they get three PBIS points for PBIS school. And so signing up for Remind 101 is one of the proofs of participation in the program. So we get to help facilitate the PBIS program. As well. Is these their own personal devices? These are their personal devices. Through through they use their personal devices to sign up to remind them. It's like and when you well. like text a radio station saying you want right. contest reminders or whatever, it's, and they send you emails or send you texts. Yeah. And um, that way, no personal 
phone numbers are exchanged. Exactly. Yeah. So the number that they send it to is like a third party number and then we don't see their number or anything like that. And if you when you sign up for it, there's a whole list of explanations of how it protects privacy and information that you can give to them. It, it's awesome, I love it. And free. Yeah. Free. <laughs> okay. Um, YouTube is blocked for us. But a lot of our parents will view things on YouTube. So the Title I program, which I work with parent development under Title I, uh, we have a YouTube channel. And so as our students work on videos and as I work on videos, we upload them to YouTube as well as embedding them on our Weebly site. And because our Weebly site is not blocked and you can upload videos up to 100 megabytes, um, <coughs> What we put on our ccsdtv.org is not blocked. What we have on YouTube, you can't get to with a spoon for love and money. You just can't get to it. But there it is. And we've just started. As we said, we were originally supposed to be able to begin this in November. And we actually did not start. Uh, we did auditions two days before Christmas break. And the kids actually showed up and brought all their writing and brought all their stuff and were excited about it. And then we had two in-service days, and so our first day that we were supposed to be on the air was the 16th of January. And it was the 16th when they told us, oh, you can't go out live. I know we have a TriCaster, and I know we said live, but that's not exactly what we meant. So instead, what we had recorded, we were able to put in our archive on the big break after about a week and a half, because, you know, all the same procedure. That we don't have. How many students do you think that would We have, well, that's originally we were only thinking of a news crew because that's what the principal said he wanted. He wanted morning news. Well, we have a whole broadcast channel. We can be our own network. So, with the vision that we had and the student driven focus, they didn't want to just be on the news. Our students came and in their auditions, they pitched programs. We, they wanted to do 12 episode seasons. <laughs> and you will see some of that video as we continue because we have students who that, that is their passion. That is their focus, that is their drive. And that's what they want to do and we're just giving them an opportunity to do that. So we'll continue. And as y'all can tell, I'm a talk. I'm a talker, and uh, let's see if this will play in here. Because now we get to the fun part. You know, you had to look at the boring slideshow, and you listen to me talk at you, and interact a little bit, but now you get to the fun part. And the fun part, for all educators and <coughs> kids, right? That's the fun part. So this was a little video. This was one of the first things that I worked on with the students that we selected to be our um, producer, director, and editors. And these were our auditions. So if you'll be joining the Cougar Nation Network after Friday. And this is just so with Windows Movie Maker. Our first full broadcast broadcast will and be on January 16th. It, it's up as long as we're awarded a position, but are constantly late under <laughs> and you <laughs> keep the I'm sorry. You may be replacing yes. your behavior in academic standing will take and this was a cold me. He was one of our few who did not write his own fish. We want to congratulate the undefeated lady to bring you good food last night. And if you haven't seen them in action, catch them next Thursday at 6 o'clock. And now we're going to take a date to celebrate. Thank you, Okay. Hi. 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 Okay. Hi. 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 That's, that's our anchor, and she's also, you're going to see some more, I think, from her later. What we're passing out now is something that is accessible free from the Federal Trade Commission um, on your internet safety and digital life. And these are publications. You can go to their website. We'll have the link at the end and order them for free. They'll mail them to you. You can distribute them to students and parents. And we use it in supplements of the common sense media um, materials. And so you can see it's, it's a fun, kind of cool looking magazine. It's got all that creative design and, you know, looks cool. 
So please keep one. And then everyone also got a ticket. A ticket. It's a sacred. It's a sacred. Okay. So I'm going to check my time. We're just at 8.30, so we're we can also, see we're I'm sorry, we're also giving the children an opportunity for presenting to live groups. In fact, we had a pitch meeting with Palmetto Rural to show them our vision for the network. I often told people, once I was introduced to television, which was back in 99, and uh, in fact, we wrote a grant then and from the education department it was $10,000. We had a coordinator come in and we actually won an excellence in student yes. broadcasting yes. award for something called the LaShonda Show, which was I, I wish I could hilarious. show you that video. That was our middle school students at A.T. McCracken in Beaufort County. And that was when Destiny's Child was still like Destiny's Child, not just Beyonce and the crew. And we, our students decided that they wanted to interview Destiny's child. And so, you know, you send off a letter and you don't get a response. And so our students decided that they were going to have LaShonda. She had the LaShonda, so she interviewed everybody. Well, she got other students to dress up like Destiny's child, and she interviewed them instead. So they had to learn how to be in character, and we had a little boy. Yeah, they were guys. Yeah, it was boys. It was three boys. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they had, but well, I think one was on the football team. Yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah. You know, these, yeah. these very confident guys put a towel in their hair yes, as a wig. Just doing it. You know, it and, so good. you know, well, I think one of the most important things in music today, you know, no, I need some wind effect. Because, uh, you know, Beyonce, you got to have wind effect. Yes. You know, it, it's like rap music, and, and I, I like Nelly, you know, that country grammar. And you know, toss your head again. It was hilarious, and that is what won the uh, state level award. And they did an incredible job. And once they had the skills, they wrote the script, they kind of storyboarded it out, they helped, they picked, they did casting for who has the personality and the look to carry this off. They recorded all the video, they edited it all themselves. It was complete student production. And once you train them, you just kind of stand back and see what awesome things they can So do we want to show a little bit? I'm going to show a little bit more of this. Because Good morning, Cougar Nation. This is Brooke Edwards wishing you a fabulous Friday. We want to congratulate the undefeated Lady Cougars with their win last night, and if you haven't seen them in action, catch them next Thursday at 6 o'clock. And now, we're going to send it to Dave with the weather. How are you doing today, Dave? Hi, I'm Danielle Grooms, and welcome to Cougar Nation Network. As you already know, in the upcoming week, we have our PBIS talent show. Well, as I've been told by my fellow classmates and instructors, we're in for a real treat. Only time will tell who is the most talented. That's all for current events on Cougar Nation Network. This is Danielle Grooms signing off. And we had all students, whether they wanted to be in front of the camera or behind the camera, audition. And for those who were behind the camera, they had to do a separate interview where they not only presented samples of their writing, but they answered questions about leadership, about training other students, about how the experiences they've already had in life have prepared them for this program. And so it was set up kind of like uh, even a college. This is our producer, our, our executive producer. And she edits all of our videos. She's um, school to work fourth period, and she comes in the library, and we have a phone hookup between Shelby's office. And she's in ROTC, and she's already been accepted to college, so her leadership ability was obvious, you know, apparent from the beginning. And if you see all the papers on the desk in front of her, that was her script. It was like half an hour worth of script. Good morning, Los um, High School. This is your fellow student, Malia Daniels, speaking. I hope every one of you is having a good day, and I want to first start off talking about a few things. First of all, it is flu season, so make sure you walk out the house, and good, 
It should be my house a good warm weather because it is food season. A few upcoming events at Carlton County High School is the PBIS Talent Show. This is a talent show where we case your fellow classmates and their talents in a talent show. This is our civic pride, the young lady. And all she wanted to do was a pledge in the moment of silence. That's what she wanted to do. That's what she's demonstrating. She's serious about it. She is. She's very serious about it. Because people don't give it enough time and attention. They don't stand appropriately. And so her moment of silence is the moment it's supposed to be. And she does. She actually did research and created different components. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please let's have a moment of silence. This was his pitch. And he's talking to a different camera. We had two cameras. <laughs> he just got him at lunch. He's yeah, really. He's on the rest of the day. And he wants to go in the military and then be a Yeah. Program. It already does a lot of research. <laughs> exactly. But he actually had to look up what legal language do you need to use. So on the actual broadcast, all of that is there. He says it. And when we pitched the shows to the network, that young man was presenting to our newly elected sheriff who was principal for a day, and they were so blown away by what he was accomplishing, they have offered their support. They will send a public safety officer to do this other side, like, you know, this is not vigilantism, you know, and such and such, you know, make sure you call the police and all that sort of thing. And they saw it as an opportunity for outreach as well. Oh, in this event, special event, we got a um, worst case scenario, like uh, self-defense, we say. Like, I'm Cody Summit, and this is my friend, um, Francisco Rivera, and he's going to play as an attacker, and I'll play as a victim. Since, well, we can't use real knife, we're going to use this pencil as an example, alright? And we're going to show what worst case scenario is when an attacker attacks you with a knife, alright? First, you hold your hand up, you twist to the side, you can use a fist or a palm, keep him right down the sternum. He'll be over, out over, and out of breath. Next thing you do, I call this a chicken wing. You put your arm behind his back, take the weapon out, do it aside, kick behind the knees, push him down, and there's two cases. You can hold one down, get your phone, call for safety, or in case you want push him down hard, making him grunt, push off, run to safety, and then call the police. This is Cody Solomon and San Francisco. This is one of our freshmen, also in ROTC, also in football, and this is his original script. He wanted to be um, in sports and ended up also pitching us a show. But he notice said, the script. Yeah. Just no paper. No paper. Good morning, Cougars. I'm Trevor Owens here with your Cougar Nation Sports. Last night, your varsity girls basketball team had a very good game against the Fort, Dest Fort George Chester Patriots. It was a very close match, but our girls took over, winning the game 63-19. to And in football, your varsity Cougars uh, almost had a win. They lost by a very shy amount of points to the Beaver Eagles, 19-26. to um, JV and B team football, 
did win their games. JV won by six points against Fort Dorchester, and BT won by one point against the most prepared, the most dedicated, has not missed a day. Was even in a car accident and came to school the next day. I said, "Honey, you need to." They didn't take you to get an X-ray. Um, and he actually is a part of a team now, where a junior and a senior they do what he says yeah. because he's the one who's prepared. And that's when I talk about paper. So whoever brings me the paper, that's what I'm going with. So Trevor brought me the outline. Trevor brought me the research. Trevor brought me the script. We're going with Trevor stuff. Y'all do. And in other sports news, the Yankees have finally did it. They are now officially in the World Series. And this is a great thing for them as they finally finished their game against the Braves. And they won the series 4-0. and And in NFL news, the Dallas Cowboys, the Redskins, and the Giants are in a three-way tie in the NFC East. All of the records are 8-6. and six. And, of course, the Redskins have the lead since in the division they are 3-1. The Cowboys have two games left in the season along with the Giants and the Redskins. It will be a close battle as this is a very, very, very much rival division. Last week, the Giant, last year, the Giants won the Super Bowl coming out of this division, barely making the Super Bowl after a one-game win. So everybody's watching the NFC East this weekend. And in the NBA, the Lakers are still off to a rough start. They're trying to get their season kicked off, but really can't do it. They have a very good squad, but the points aren't coming together. But on the other news, the new Knicks squad, working really hard and trying to get off to a fast start, and they are. They, they lost their 15-game winning streak last week on a loss, but they still have a lot of momentum going on. The Houston Rockets are also doing good this year with their new addition of two players, Jeremy Lin and James Harden, and they're looking to get to a good start off. And the Miami Heat, as usual, are doing their thing and keeping track of the league. And well, that is it for your sports for this evening. And thank you for watching. Fast stars, and they are. They they lost their 15-game winning streak last week. And this was his first game. All this one shot. <laughs> first game. And you should rock with Josh Gordon this year. And just addition of two players, Jeremy and yeah, but he's awesome. We love him, and we get to keep. There's a lot of the students who volunteer were seniors, and you know how that can decimate your program when all of your experienced people leave. And these are his other. These are his co hosts. Good morning from Cougar Nation Network. This is Demetrius Bell along with Terry. And they Terry actually, um, Demetrius, who's in the red, he's out of dress code. We're a school uniform school. And he brings his GQ outfit <laughs> for recording every day. And he goes to the bathroom and changes clothes so he can record in GQ. <laughs> and then he goes back to his uniform. And he actually does our, our um, dress and etiquette for the other young men. You know, you can't be on camera, you got to have tie, you got to have uh, He does that. Well, yeah, that's Two topics we got to talk about today is Cowboys, Stellas, Knicks, and Lakers. We're going to start off with the Knicks and Lakers. What is your opinion on how the Knicks played a better game than the Lakers and how smart it well, is? Next topic, Cowboys and Steelers. Now, Cowboys, that's my team personally, but they played a better game than the Steelers, if you look at it. Yeah. I mean, going off into overtime, they were focused, they were ready for it, because they knew the Steelers were going to get the ball when it came in overtime, and when they saw that happen, all they needed was that interception. And when Brandon Carr had the opportunity, he took it. Cowboys a lot win. of the students are not regulars. They're what we call community reporters because in our county we have a lot of small communities and we have one high school, so everyone is busted. And we have community reporters to be able to let us know what's going on at home because everyone has someone in one of the other schools. So since we're all on television, when any of us are on television, it's a good opportunity. This young lady, for example, will be up at Winthrop in the state choral competition, and so she, that would be a special report. She Good morning, Cougars. I'm Madison. At this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will have a moment of silence.
And now for our special features. Did you know that four students from Carleton County High School went to Columbia, South Carolina in order to audition for the All-State Chorus? Four students, which their names are Trenton Bridge, Wayne Davis, Hunter Riser, and myself, Madison Blackwell. We are all very excited about going to Winthrop University in Rock Hill, South Carolina to participate in March of 2013. We only have two days to prepare our pieces for our concert in March at Winthrop University and we will perform on so Saturday. Everyone, uh, the flip, the teachers who use flipped classrooms can see this as an opportunity. We can put lessons online. That well, and just much Spanish. Yes. Um, one in the New Tech High School is we, our high school is awarded a $3.1 million grant um, that brings technology and individualized learning into one of our school, a new school of study for our high school. In their Spanish courses, they're actually going to be teaching Spanish to elementary students in our district. And so this broadcast channel is one of the ways in which they are doing that. So the Spanish students at the high school will have to, they will learn and then they will prepare lesson plans that are suitable for younger students. And then they will broadcast that and then also go to the actual schools. So it's all kind of, it's, it's chock full of awesomeness. So even though, like when Captain Glover came from Spay War, the naval hero, we didn't know about it. So I read the paper, I said, this guy was here? Yeah. Um, we have to be able to react on a, a dime sometime because the school is so huge. We have, we're built into schools of study, which was supposed to create communities of learning, which really ended up kind of fragmenting. It's like you have a four separate, five separate schools. Process. So now we, um, this is another way to expand communication and bring people together. Report on something they're involved in. Are they able to check out um, a yeah. camera and take with them to the event? Right. That's, that's sure. the And interestingly enough, when we, this was our principal's vision from the beginning. We did move into a new building. So this is being done on just uh, a JDC, JDC, $160 camera. Mm -hmm. But it shoots in HD. And we originally started using just Windows um, Movie Maker. And now we're using ABS Video Editor. And it was $59, so not incredibly expensive. But it does just transitions and color screening and audio editing. And we'll use, unlike Windows Movie Maker, um, well, no, Windows Movie Maker will do it. but. It will directly edit your original HD video files and then convert it to QuickTime, Movie Maker, a whole bunch of other file formats quickly, um, which is very, very useful. Yeah, formats are good. But, and it works. Yeah, exactly. And it'll start from any of like 11 different formats and then convert into those same formats. So for $59, I mean, when you can't do iMovie, yeah, that it was really great. And it's at abs4uyou.com, I believe is the, the link for that. So um, I'm not going to continue with this. I've got some, I'm going to go to the next thing. Okay, so you have to prove that what you're doing makes sense. <coughs> so remembering that we just started the end of January, this is our internet safety. <coughs> um, chart. This is from Weebly. It shows the access. So you can see how we weren't really promoting it and we were getting some hits and then we started promoting it and that was our big push. So you can see the spike and then we're getting ready to come up on another big push to promote it. Um, I'm going to go to other slides so you can see that. One in our district, which is very rural, Internet access at home is a difficult proposition. So we at the Title I office, we have a parent center that has computer access for parents. We partner with our public library that has computer access for parents and students. And our libraries will often provide access for not only students but parents. So if they're going to do something online, it's really through our opportunities 
in the district that they're going to be able to access it, which means that we have to collaborate with our computer labs or teachers in order to get them access to do it. <coughs> okay, this is the CCSD TV. Again, this just started the end of February, and so you can see that this is a little bit more regular with people hitting in and viewing the pages. So as new shows get uploaded, you know. Yeah, people go on. Did you see me? And so they go. So you're, you're, um, you're, it gives you this report. Yes. Yes, it automatically gives you a report. And if you pay for the pro version of Weebly, which is $40 a year, so it's yeah, not incredibly expensive, but it'll actually give you a breakdown by page of which pages are the most popular. And it'll show search terms that led to people reaching you and also the links, the previous link that linked to you. So you can see whether people are coming from Google or Facebook or your district website or things like that. This is the Title I website, and this is for a comparison. Our Title I website is also done by Weebly. I manage and maintain that. Um, we're going through the advanced ed process, so which is so much fun. It's just awesome. Um, yeah, all day, every day, nonstop. But our normal hits range in about 100 a day range. But you can see when we've been promoting people to come to that site to link to do the survey, you'll see spiking. So our internet hits a day for, even for our district website, are not that high. So seeing the number of hits for those brand new websites being anywhere you're close to it is significant. That's why I'm bringing all this now, up. Because we're a small district. Okay, yes. With your weekly, I'm, and this is on your weekly too, that's mm -hmm. what you're saying, the report. Um, I have Weebly, okay? Mm -hmm. But do you have to pay for each one? Because I have more than one. I have a reading uh, challenge. I have if a you have paid for Weebly and you right. create your website in your pro account, you can have a oh, whole gap of URL addresses. Yes. Different ones. Now, oh, if you don't pay, I mean, I paid for mine, but it's the ba basic. If you have the basic one, not the pro one, yeah. I think you get two websites. Okay. Um, but for Pro, if you see mine, I have like eight already. Okay. There you go. Um, and our parent involvement program pays for that because it is not available to the rest of the district. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the clearest way for me to say it. Well, could we get time to one to pay for it? You may be able to because in this instance, we are supplementing the communication directly to parents mm -hmm. rather than supplanting the district's objective. So the because of our focus and purpose for these websites, it's a separate thing and we can pay for it with Title I funds. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more about funding a little bit. Yes, does your district, district have like your district webpage or your school website? Um, do you link your weekly pages? That's what we have done. That? And does your school have that. a web host provider? Or our, our district website, right. I believe, is <coughs> our district web page. Okay. And some of the schools have chosen to go that same route. So, for example, um, Northside Elementary School is nsc.politan.k12.sc.us, and that's their URL. However, because that's so easy to remember. You see how it just rolls off the tongue. Um, but some of our other schools, uh, for example, Cottageville or Hendersonville Elementary, they're cottagevilleelementary.org, hendersonvilleelementary.org. And from our district website, you go to school websites, and then you just click the website that you want, and it points you wherever it actually is. Because for our other schools, the, the naming structure is not consistent for the websites, so it's just a link. And then for the schools that have their own websites um, and their own domains that they manage themselves. So if you do your own domain and you use Weebly or WordPress or whatever else, you can edit it yourself and you can make the changes instantly. You publish, right? And you just, you just click publish and it updates it like two seconds later, refresh the page, it's done. So that's the other reason because I change things on a daily basis on my website. So, outcomes. Um, we're going to continue this program. 
the program, rather than being centered at the high school, is now going to be centered at the district level, which means my office is going to be handling the scheduling. And that is going to enable us to include all of the Title I schools. So part of what we will be doing is the students who are doing their morning news, who are doing special features, the special programs we have at the schools, we will actually be developing it in accordance with the same kind of structure and broadcasting it out to the community. And our AUP has an opt-out media permission. So if you sign the AUP, unless you check off to say, no, you can't use my child's picture, and da, 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 then everybody's covered and we have notices for every event. This event may be recorded, you may be seen, this will be broadcast. And our local access is only broadcast in our town. Half us related anyway. Yeah. Um, the student and parent engagement we do a survey, and one of our survey questions is, do you get this channel? Have you seen this channel? Is your child interested in this? And we give them more information and information about the website. And we've, as I said, just started that process. And so our broadcast content is going to be increasing. Um, a reflection, because you know if you've done National Board or just, any, you have to reflect. Take a moment and reflect. So writing is what we have identified as a key component and as you all heard in the general session, the significance at, that you as media specialists have is really going to be able to be seen more dramatically in writing than necessarily even in reading. So because we are including writing and different types of writing, writing for different audiences, standard, just bells went off, writing in different formats, um, doing icons or iconographic materials, um, communicating in all those ways, just standards, just bing, 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 all over the place. Um, and then we talked a little bit about how we're going to continue to collaborate with teachers at all levels in doing project-based or flipped classroom learning, which is especially appropriate for video. And then here's our contact information. Um, the CCSD Title I is my Title I, obviously, Twitter handle, and Madeira Sky is me personally. Um, and I forward a lot of things having to do with education technology on my personal and information for parents on the Title I. And the website for Ms. Douglas Mrs. Douglas Simmons, is their school media center website. Um, and then the Title I website has links to all of my many endeavors. This will be available. All of this is on the Edmoda. Which I think is nice. You have that Edmoda already? You have the Edmoda? Sometimes the planning works, right? Yes. And so here's some more of the um, links. And then for the brochure that you had, and they have scads of stuff at um, FTC. Scads and scads of stuff, and it's free, and you can order it. And they're in all different formats. They have booklets, brochures, little magazine style, you know, wonderful. And an added benefit that I've also observed since we have so many seniors in our program, a lot of them want to still be communications and broadcast journalism majors. And several of our students have included the opportunity of working with the Cougar Nation Network in their college essays. So once again, the writing piece is pulled back in. Exactly. So are we drawing Yeah, we're about to, I think I've got it here. Here's some more. Now, time for prizes. Everybody loves prizes. I love prizes. So what we are giving away um, to you wonderful listeners and lovely people are books that the Title I Parent Development Program has purchased through firstbook.org in the Reading Warehouse. Reading Warehouse is in Charleston and Charlotte. Frank and Jeff, they are so incredibly awesome. Okay, and let me tell you why. Because not only can you get books, great books, for a dollar, but if you buy a whole bunch of books and go to their warehouse in person, sometimes you can get even less than that. So the books that we are giving away as gifts, the most expensive book on that table was 45 cents. Can I get it in? Forty-five cents. We pay for them with Title One Parent Involvement Funds, and what we do with them in order to justify that 
is I teach literacy sessions and our literacy coaches teach literacy sessions. And as an incentive, every parent who comes gets to take a book for each child. And we have distributed over 3,000 books for their personal home library. And with, with that in grants, we target Yeah, there's a lot of different things. Do you have the writing for grants? I don't know. I don't know. It's just in my box. Oh, it's in my box. Yeah, it's in my box. Exactly. So, so, and first of all, that's good. If you, if they have a distribution that's in your local area, you can go pick it up and you don't even have to pay shipping. Because the 45 cents is just shipping. The books are great. So I went and picked up like 1,500 books from Raleigh. Raleigh. And it was cheaper for me to get my SUV and drive up there and get them than it, it would be to have them shipped. Did you have any students yet? We have in the entire district about 6,200 students. 60, yes, did you have 6,200 books? And that's what you've gotten through those two sources. You've gotten a book for every child. Not, not every child got a book because their parent did have to come to get it. But we've distributed over 3,000 already. And we've given books to, um, we've allowed teachers access to the book so that when parents come in for parent conferences, they get a book. When parents come in to check their child out early, they can get a book. There's, if a parent comes in the building, and this is something that I, I preach. If a parent comes in the building, they leave with a book. So, and, and parents love to get stuff. And sometimes I just get boxes of books that sent me from, mm -hmm. and I never know what they are. It's just a big box. Yeah, exactly. And it take looks good. So now, prizes, prizes, prizes. Okay. So tickets out, 618497. Four nine seven. Anybody? The last three digits four nine seven. Four nine seven? No, she left. Okay. And and you must be present to win. I'm probably I'll just keep picking until we run out of books. So if as soon as we call your number, we're done. So you can get your book. And thank you so much for coming. And if you have any questions, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yay! Yay. You know, you the use ones, so I'll pick out Because you never know how many people you're going to have. 505. 505. No. Must be present to win. That's a sticky little wicket, isn't it? 498. Okay. I know that people were here. Yeah, let's just count how many people.